Hey, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Susan, and today I'm actually going to be discussing with you guys my BookCon 2019 book haul. Now, I actually have 30 books here that I picked up over the course of the weekend in New York City. Not all of them came from BookCon, but some of them came from like The Strand, Barnes & Noble, Amazon Books, and I'm actually going to be talking about those here as well. Because of the amount of books I have to talk about, I'm actually not going to be going into like amazing, amazing detail on all of them, just to kind of save a little bit of time. Anyway, let's get started. The first book I have to talk about today is one that I bought in the Barnes & Noble blind date with a book, and that is Meg Cabot's The Shadowland Mediator. Now, I actually don't know much about the series other than it's a paranormal romance, and the main character shares a name with me. Uh, the main character's name is Susanna, people call her Suze. My name is Susan, and in middle school people called me Suze. So I found that pretty interesting, and it's actually a short book. It's only a little bit over 200 pages, or just shy of 300. And I actually can't wait to dive into that, hopefully this summer. Because it does sound pretty interesting. It's paranormal romance and a ghost that wants revenge, is all I was able to kind of really get from it. The next book I'm going to be talking about is actually going to be a sequel to a book I read last month, and that is The Last of August by Brittany Cavallaro. The Last of August is a sequel to A Study in Charlotte, and hopefully we're going to continue on with some more fun adventures between Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson, the descendants of Sherlock Holmes and John Watson. But I don't know much about what they're going to be getting into in this. It, I went in pretty blind to a study in Charlotte. Other than, like, the only thing I knew was that it was a Sherlock Holmes retelling. And I want to kind of go in the same way here. So, yeah. I just know and I'm hoping that it has something to do with August Moriarty. And to maybe see some more descendants of, like, the Sherlock gang. The next book is actually one I've seen recommended a few times by a few different booktubers, and it's a middle grade book that I bought at Amazon Books, and that is Mr. Lumcello's Library by Chris Garbenstein. I probably just butchered his name. I don't know much about like anything in this series, but it sounds like a fun middle grade, and it was actually pretty cheap, and it's pretty short. I could probably knock this out in like a couple days if I wanted to. Now I finally bought a book also that was beloved by many and like everyone tells me I should read it and I'm terrified to because it has to do with historical fiction but I read it once when I was like the summer of 2009 when I was going into 10th grade or like in middle school and I cannot remember a single thing about this and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. I'm actually as I said, I'm terrified to go into this because it's historical fiction, but I figured why not give it a shot, like, kind of go a little out of my comfort zone. I was in New York, which was already way out of my comfort zone as it is, and I just really want to give this book a shot, see if maybe I like it, and see if why people love it so much. Another book that I actually got that's kind of out of my comfort zone is an adult romance that I have read a little bit already. Like, I think I've read the first 23 pages actually while I was in New York in my hotel room and that is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating by Christina Lauren. I was actually looking for The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. They didn't actually have that at Barnes & Noble so I ended up picking up this one because I've actually heard a lot of good things and I really want to try to branch more into the genre of like adult romance and like more contemporaries and I thought this would actually be a pretty good place to start. It was it's kind of like a romance in the city and I was in the city so there's that I actually am hoping to maybe pick that up soon pick it up again soon this summer and give it a finish now the next two books are actually a duology and it's actually one I've heard a lot of good things about but it's also like a genre like fantasy that I haven't gotten into as much as I want to and that is strange the dreamer and A Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I haven't even read the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy yet, and I own the first two in that trilogy. And I don't know if I like Lainey Taylor's writing, but like these covers are gorgeous, and I just wanted them on my shelf, and they weren't that bad of a price, so... Figure why not, I was at the Strand when I bought them, and yeah, I heard a lot of good things, and I'm hoping to see what all the hype is about soon. Now the next book is actually one I meant to pick up on my Denver trip, 
but I wasn't able to as I was flying and I could not fit the size of this book into my carry-on to bring it back home. And that is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. I just know that this book follows Alec and Magnus as they adventure through France, I think it is, or Paris. And Magnus is like accused of like starting like this like demon like army or like demon cult and like when he doesn't even remember doing it and I just love Magnus and I love Alec and I just really wanted to finally dive into this series even though I haven't even made it through all of the mortal instruments yet or all of the infernal devices or the dark artifices yet I'm just trash for the mortal instruments already the next book I picked up is another new release that I think just came out very recently and that is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I haven't read The Poet X. I'm actually not interested in picking up The Poet X unless I really pick it up on audiobook because I've heard a lot of good things about the audiobook. But I know this has to do with cooking and plus this cover underneath is just, it's gorgeous. I really want to give it a shot. I don't know much about it. And I'm actually really hoping I like it. Now the next set of books I'm going to be talking about are actually going to be the arcs and the chapter samplers that I got. And just like a lot of these, actually all of these were just handed to me for free. So I don't know much about any of them except for like maybe one that I did start reading a little bit. And I think for the chapter samplers I know something about one or two of them as well. But anyway, let's get started with the chapter samplers. I got a few. I got four it looks like. And the first chapter sampler I have today is going to be Rebel from Marie Lu. And I know this is, I want to say, a continuation of the Legend trilogy, which I haven't finished yet. I actually have only read maybe the first like 25 or 30 pages of Legend with the intent to finish. I just haven't been in the mood to really read more like dystopian and everything. But when I do, I'm hoping to dive into uh, Legend again soon because... Rebel comes out on October 1st. The next one is actually one I don't know much about, but it was just kind of handed to me. And it comes out March 3rd of 2020, so I have a little bit of time to maybe read the chapter sampler and see what I think. And that is going to be Havenfall by Sarah Holland. It's another fantasy, it's just like a short little sampler, but hopefully I actually really like it. The next one is from an author that I did, I've read before, and I didn't even know she had a new book coming out. But that is going to be for The Haunted by Danielle Vega. I read Survive the Night by her and I absolutely adored it. It was creepy, like just the right amount of creepy, like enough where I, I didn't want to read it too close to going to bed because I was afraid of getting like a nightmare kind of creepy. And I really hope The Haunted is actually just the same. I think this is out now as I did see it today when I went to my local Barnes & Noble to pick up Ghosts of the Shadow Market. The last chapter sampler I actually got is for a book that I know is coming out in August because I'm going to the signing for it or it comes out at the end of July and that is going to be the graphic novel sampler for Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. I actually cannot wait for this. The art style is just adorable and I actually just cannot wait to see what this is actually all about and see how cute this can actually really get. Now the rest of the, these in this like next little section are actually going to be the arcs I was handed. And the first one is from a book that actually came out in March. And it's one I don't know anything about at all. It, it was given to me when I bought a book for my father. And that is going to be The Wall by John Lancaster. I don't know much about it. I don't even know if I'm actually going to really read this. I might end up donating it. But who knows. I might just even give it to my dad itself. The next book I have to talk about today is going to be an arc for Technically You Started It by Lana Wood Johnson. And this is actually a different one. I've glanced into this a little bit while I was waiting for the book explosion meet and greet. And it's actually all told in text message. So it's actually a different format. I know it comes out on June 25th. And I actually hope to dive into this pretty soon and get it done because I can probably read through it really, really fast considering it's all just texts. So in Technically You Started It, Haley and Martin meet each other over text message, but the problem is, is that like 
she gets a text asking if this is Haley in her hist in the history class and the guy who texts her has a cousin of the exact same name Martin Nathaniel Monroe the second so she doesn't know which one it is that she's talking to and yeah it sounds like there's a romance that starts from there it just sounds kind of cute and I really hope to get to it soon the next arc I have is for a dystopian that comes out in September and that is called The Hive by Barry Liga and Morgan Baden. I actually got this arc when I was just kind of walking through. I saw kind of like a line of people. I asked what it was for and they just kind of handed me the book and I did get it signed by both of the authors. So they signed Susan delete your account and yeah. It actually sounds like a fun story uh, in the start of it. There's a group called The Hive. It sounds like they control all the social media and everything happens like everyone just kind of gets noticed. I don't know much about it but I do hope to get into it pretty soon and see what kind of good this has. The next arc I have is for a fantasy arc that comes out in September as well. And I don't know much about this, like I said for all the other ones, I really don't know much about the arcs I got because they were all free and I kind of just took free. <laughs> I know I shouldn't, I should have probably saved them for some people, but I mean, I'm not that hurt. Uh, this kind of just sounds more like a fantasy adventure, a young adult fantasy adventure. And that is going to be The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. And I actually like glanced at this a little bit and it does sound pretty interesting. It sounds like it's about a girl who just kind of wants to notice and it was kind of giving me, I don't want to say Narnia vibes, but definitely like adventure vibes. The next book I have is actually one I have not even glanced at. I'm assuming it's a young adult, but it was given to me at the Scholastic Tent. And that is going to be Tarnished Are the Stars by Rosie Thor. And it is coming out in October of this year. This sounds like a, this looks like a fantasy or maybe like kind of like a sci-fi novel. And I really, 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 really want to get into it because this cover just looks amazing and it has these zodiac kind of like stars on it, like the astrology stars, or it, that might be the Little Dipper or the Big Dipper. I don't know, I never took astronomy. So, you know, you can just like beat me up in the comments if I got it wrong. The next two arcs I actually got are going to be adult arcs, and I got them from the Blackstone Publishing booth. And the first one comes out in October of this year, and that is going to be Trinity Sight by Jennifer Givhan. Givhan? I don't know how to pronounce it, and I feel bad. I did, however, get it signed, and it says she put down BookCon 2019, and she says, Dear Susan, all the desert love, uh, love Jen. And I just thought this was cute. She signed it in purple, which actually happens to be my favorite color. And she was such like a nice person to meet and talk to. I actually really hope to get into this soon. So maybe catch it out in a, in a, like a wrap up pretty quickly. And the last book I got signed, I actually owe a lot to my dad who did wait in line for me to get this signed. Well, I went to a uh, Rainbow Rowell event. And that is it's The Dark Corners of the Night by Meg Gartner. This is actually a third book in a series, but it comes out in December, and it is a thriller. So, I don't know much about it. I try not to go into thrillers, like, where I've read, like, the back. But I'm hoping to either pick this up soon or see if I actually need to read the first two to, like, actually get into it. But she signed it to Susan. Happy reading, Meg Gardner. Now, the next stack of books, some of these are signed, some were handed to me, some I bought. The first two are actually happened to be ones I bought, and they were kind of like blind dates with a book. The first one is The Lord of the Flies, which is actually a classic I wanted to get into. I've heard some different things about it, and I just want to see what it's about, see if I actually will enjoy it myself. The next one I know nothing about, except for the fact that it has something to do with, like, a Bob Marley. And that is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon Jane. It actually might be one that I am either going to donate or try to sell to Half Price Books if none of my friends want to read it or I end up not reading it myself. The next three books came in a book club girl box of Beach Reads. 
And the first one is Forever Beach by Shelley Noble. I know nothing about it. Like I've probably said for every single book in this book haul already. The next one is going to be Same Beach Next Year by Dorothy Benton Frank. The last one is going to be The Endless Beach by Jenny Colgan. Now the next book is actually a children's book I got signed but it's adorable like the artwork is completely adorable and I would love to actually like share this with some of like the my friends who babysit or like friends who have kids and that is gonna be How to Make a Monster Smile by Tomi. I'm not even gonna try her last name. <laughs> but she put To Susan Read Happy. And like they were just handing these out for free and I thought it was cute. I got a little bookmark too. So yeah, it was just cute and I said why not? I'll share it with some kids in my life. Now the next two are books I bought mainly for the cover. And that is gonna be The Bone Keeper by Luca Vest. And I mean the back of it just like sold me on it. It was like a, it's a thriller and it's like where like there's like a mysterious house like a mysterious house in the woods and like when four people go back up to see it three come back someone's like wandering the streets like 20 years later and then like there's like she's claiming to have like fled the house and then all of a sudden a body shows up and that's all I know. That's all the back has told me. I really want to get into this soon and I hope, 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 hope. I just love it as much as like I love this cover. The next one is actually going to be a middle grade novel of from the Fairy Tale Reform School series by Jen Kalanita and that is called Flunked. And all I know is this one is about a girl who is like sort of wicked and like she gets sentenced to three months at the Fairy Tale Reform School where all of her teachers are the former villains such as like the big bad wolf, the evil queen, and the wicked stepmother from Cinderella. This just sounds interesting and it's a short book, it's a middle grade, and it just sounds like a fun little adventure. The next book is actually one from a popular series that everybody knows, but I got it because it number one it had a stamped like signature in it, and number two it came with a pin for the series, and I picked up the Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass, which if I'm right, if I've heard right anyway, it is the prequel novellas to the Throne of Glass series, which I haven't read the Throne of Glass series yet. I'm hoping to this summer, but I thought if this actually is the prequel series, I might pick this up first. If not, or I shouldn't, please comment below and correct me. The next one is actually one that was handed to me at the Hache uh, booth. And I just kind of like saw him talking to people handing books and I was like, hey, what's this? And he's like, I shouldn't give this to you, but he did. And that is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez. I know nothing about this. It looks like an adult contemporary again. And I mean, I'm trying to get into more of those. So hopefully I like it. If not, I will probably donate it or give it to a friend. The next one is actually one I bought for my dad. That is Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. Now... I bought this for my dad because my dad works with a company that actually works closely with NASA and it was kind of more of a joke and it was five dollars but it actually in the end he actually looked at the back and he actually was interested in the story so hey yay for me I picked out a good gift. The next one I bought is actually by an author that I've heard a lot about and she wrote a truth the series Truth Witch and this one is something that seems more of like a thriller horror story. And that is Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Dennard. I just don't know much about it. I want to kind of go in blind. I know it's a series. I think it's a trilogy. And yeah, I just actually hope I like it. It might be sound something like good to pick up around like Halloween. Next one I'm going to talk about is a newer release that I actually don't know how I feel about it. But it's something I kind of saw and I was interested in the premise of it. And that is The Mister by E.L. James funny story my dad while waiting for me one day was sitting on the by the main stage and saw a part of the panel for E.L. James and where they talked about this and what he told me like how interesting it sounded actually convinced me to pick it up I don't know much about it other than it takes place in London and yeah I, and I'm sure it has like some Fifty Shades of Grey vibes if it doesn't I'm actually gonna be a little disappointed the next two are a series that I picked up, or like a duology I picked up, I don't know if there's like any more, but that is 
Puddin' and Dumplin' by Julie Murphy. I actually know my best friend Jamie has loved these books and I picked them up because they were actually part of these strand signed editions. So I said, why not? Two signed books. I'll take them. Anyways, guys, that was actually all 30 books I picked up at BookCon this year. And I'm actually really excited to go back next year for BookCon and BEA as well. And if you have any recommendations on like books I should pick up first out of this haul or books you want to see reviews for, just let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you soon. Peace!